Okay, good evening, councillors, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Cabinet meeting of the 21st of October. Uh, so we'll start off with apologies for absence. Uh, looking around the room, all Cabinet members are here. Uh, so we'll go straight into the minutes of the previous meeting. Is it your wish I sign those as a true record? Anybody? Uh, Councillor Farrell? Happy to second. Okay. And Councillor Pritchard moved them. Uh, all those in favour? Excellent. Consider those as signed. Uh, item three on the agenda is declaration of interest. Uh, does anybody have anything to declare this evening? No, and I've not been notified of any beforehand. So we'll go straight into item four, and this is question time. Uh, as you will all be aware, I've uh, asked on a number of occasions for members of the public to take up the opportunity of asking questions of Cabinet. Uh, on this evening, we do have a question submitted. Unfortunately, the person asking it is unable to attend. Uh, so I'm going to read the question and my answer. Uh, so the question has been submitted on behalf of, sorry, by uh, Mr. Hugh Loxton, uh, and he's asking me the following. The new markets in Tamworth are a great idea, and it's clear the food festival at the weekend was a success. One thing that has been mentioned is the difficulty uh, those in wheelchairs and mobility scooters uh, have in accessing the stalls when they are situated on grass, especially when the grass is wet. Could an alternative hard standing area be looked into for future events to ensure that ac uh, they are accessible for all? Uh, so, so my answer is uh, I'd like to thank Mr Loxton uh, for his kind comments uh, and recognising the success of the recent food and drink uh, festival in the Castle Grounds, which was delivered by LSD Promotions, who operate our market for us. The ambition of the Council is to support new activity that extends and complements the market in order to specifically benefit the wider town centre business. The location on this occasion uh, was chosen uh, and, and was purposefully done uh, to achieve the aim of having a picturesque and attractive setting. I personally didn't attend the event, uh, but I'm assured that matting was put down to ensure access was uh, and egress uh, to the main lower lawn was uh, a smooth transition and there was also some seating in place uh, for anybody who needed a, a break. Um, going forward, the Council will always try to ensure that all events that are put on in the borough are accessible and inclusive uh, to, to everybody. Uh, and it's one of the things uh, we were considering at a meeting only last week, is how do we grow the offer uh, of the market uh, and the events, not only in the Castle Grounds, but also in the Town Centre. Uh, so we'll, we will take on board Mr Loxon's comments when we consider uh, how we roll that in future. That is my answer. Okay, everyone's looking at me blank. Thank you very much. Uh, as Mr. Loxon isn't here uh, and didn't hear my answer, uh, he's unable to submit a supplementary on this occasion. So we'll move on to item five, which is matters referred to the cabinet in accordance with overview and scrutiny procedure rules. I am not aware of any. Which brings us on to item six on the agenda, Modern Slavery and Human Trafficking Statement 2020-2021 and the Portfolio Holder for Regulatory and Community Safety. Councillor Doyle. Thank you, Mr Chairman. The purpose of this report is to approve the Council's Modern Slavery and Human Trafficking Statement for 2020 and 2021. Um, under Section 54 of the Modern Slavery Act 2015, it imposes a legal duty on organisations which supply goods and or services from or to the UK and have a global turnover above 36 million to publish a slavery and human trafficking statement at the end of each financial year. Section 52 of the Act imposes a duty on public authorities including district councils to notify the Secretary of State or suspected victims of slavery or human trafficking. Tamworth Borough Council adopts a zero tolerance position on known violations of any anti-human trafficking or anti-modern slavery laws and is included in safeguarding policies and duties. We are committed to improving our practices and ensuring there is no modern slavery or human trafficking in any part of our business and in so far as, as possible ensuring our suppliers do the same. The modern slavery and human trafficking statement which is attached in the appendix sets out the council's actions to understand potential modern slavery risks related to its business. Also put in uh, place steps that are aimed to uh, ensuring that there is no slavery or human trafficking in its business. Its supply chains 
and relates to actions and activities during the fi financial year for the 1st of April 2020 to the 31st of March 2021 and will be published on the Tamworth Borough Council website. Legislation prescribes publication within six months of the end of the financial year. To note the statement was endorsed by Audit and Governance uh, Committee on the 16th of September 2021 and there are no further recommendations from that committee so it just leaves for Cabinet to approve. So I recommend to Cabinet approve the Council's Modern Slavery and Human Trafficking Statement uh, which has been endorsed by the Audit and Governance Committee. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Doyle. Are there any questions or comments from other Cabinet members? No, I had a question but Councillor Doyle answered it uh, in relation to the Audit and Governance Committee and that nothing had arisen from that discussion. So. Okay, if there are no further questions or comments, Councillor Doyle has proposed that. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Pritchard, all those in favour? Okay, that is carried. Thank you very much and thank you, Councillor Doyle. Uh, brings me on to item seven of the agenda and that is the Council Housing, uh, Council Housing Tenants Annual Report 2020-2021 and that is Councillor Alex Farrell. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is the 11th annual uh, tenants performance report um, and you'll be pleased to know oh, I won't take you through all 84 pages, although there's some good stuff in there. Uh, I'd like to thank the officers for their hard work on this. Um, uh, I'm particularly pleased to say actually that this uh, came to the first uh, homelessness prevention subcommittee on the 22nd of September, just uh, under a month ago, and that committee uh, approved this and discussed the impact of the social housing white paper and the proposed regulatory landscape uh, was discussed as well. So um, there's there's lots of uh, lots of things to say about this report, but it's it's effectively talks about the um, uh, the state of our of our housing stock and talks about um, various different things involving our tenants. Uh, you know, it, it is noted that you know there are some areas that we c we can improve on, um, but generally um, we've got some good key performance indicators. Um, and compliance uh, across the regulator and social housing uh, consumer standards. So there are quite a few um, recommendations to Cabinet, um, including to approve it, of course, um, and also um, delegate authority uh, to myself as the portfolio holder to make the necessary amendments to the draft um, annual report. We also, uh, I'd like to note um, that the Housing and Homelessness Subcommittee um, received the presentation also to support the regulator for social housing's requirement uh, for registered providers of social housing, including local authorities in England to meet the uh, relevant regulatory standards. Uh, also to receive a further report in 2022-2023, ahead of next year's annual report, the 12th one, on the self-assessment and proposed improvement plan. Uh, and finally to uh, approve the release of £20,000 from the, uh, the HRA uh, general contingency budget in funding the independent self-assessment and action plan. So, uh, any questions? Thank you, Councillor Farrell. Are there any questions or comments from Cabinet members? Councillor Cook. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. And I hope Councillor Farrell's use of the term state of our council houses was a Freudian slip. <laughs> it was, yes. Uh, fully understood. Now, I'm just making a little joke. Um, like I say, it's the 11th iteration of this report. Uh, as those of us have been around uh, since the dying days of the last Labour government, um, you know, in the noughties, will recall, uh, this council used to have to go on a regular basis a uh, comprehensive performance assessment, so which later became a comprehensive area assessment. That we know that Eric Pickles, when Secretary of State, put a lot of this stuff through the bonfire of quangos, as they call it, at the you know as the change of the government in 2010. This was an element of, the, of it that survived, and I was vastly opposed to it at the time. Having watched this report being used over 11 years, I'm actually now a rather a large supporter of it because it does give us a wonderful reflection of how we're performing in our HRA. And year after year after year, I've had to say to Tina Mustafa's team how well they perform on these assessments. I mean, take, take in, and it's personal view, take in, for example, the fact that during the pandemic and COVID, when everybody was distressed, everybody was down, everyone was worried, and we were all stuck in our homes, that was an opportunity for actually our feedback to go down somewhat. It hasn't in reality. Our tenants still seem in the main relatively satisfied with the performance of this council and the standard of their home, which is wonderful feedback. My only question would be, and I assume it is COVID related, is we seem to have slipped a few days on uh, dealing with voids, but I, I'd, I'd assume that is COVID related. I was wondering if uh, Mr Mustafa could just quickly take me through that. Thank you, Mr Chairman. 
Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Councillor Cook. That's exactly the reason for that slippage. As you know, during the pandemic, um, the government sought to pause all lettings um, for uh, a two-month period um, because, obviously, of the restrictions around health and safety. So, for that period of time, voids were held there. So, you know, we've chosen to be absolutely transparent in terms of our performance and show that they've not been stripped out of the figures in any kind of way, which, when we benchmark with some of our uh, peers, they have taken that, you know, that data out of the um, calculation. So um, that is the worst position, if you like, in terms of being absolutely uh, transparent around that. So yeah, for that period when we couldn't let anything and there was almost a, um, you know, things were held in abeyance, that's why it's an anomaly, I believe, this year. Councillor Cook, do you want to come back? Uh, just a request of you, Mr Chairman. Give, given the quality of the report for the 11th year on the trot, could I request you as leader send a thank you to Mr Barnes and Mr Mustafa to pass to the staff on their wonderful performance in housing. OK, thank you for that. And uh, we'll see what response I get to my question. Uh, Councillor Farrell. Thank you, Chair. I uh, just want to add to that, really, that, you know, it does use, um, as Tina Mustafa said, uh, benchmarking across the sector and, you know, it shows that we d we've done excellently in many respects, really. Um, the uh, the performance, uh, specifically in relation to the, the different key performance indicators we use, um, show, you know, really high standards. And, and as Councillor Cook said, you know, uh, it's well received um, by, by the tenants largely. So, you know, I echo those comments. Thank you. Any further questions from Cabinet members? Uh, like I suggested, I have uh, one, uh, and at the bottom of the, the page on my screen, it says page 39, but also says page 9, so whichever version uh, you guys are on. Uh, and this relates to customer feedback, complaints, compliments, and service re requests. Uh, if we look at the first table, it suggests the number of complaints uh, dropped from 1819 to 1920 and then significantly went back up in 2021 at the same time the number of service requests has dropped from 315 in 1819 down to 202 in 2021 uh, and in the next chart we're looking at uh, number of complaints upheld 79 uh, now obviously I'd, I don't want specifics on that uh, but I wondered if there was an explanation for those trends, particularly the relationship between the increase in the number of complaints versus the reduction in the service requests, because I, I assume it's us that decide whether it's a complaint or a service request. So, so is, is there anything behind those those, those figures? Uh, and then separately, there's that, that, that 79 figure for, for the complaints upheld. I don't know if we've got any detail on that. Uh, thank you, yeah, Mr Chairman. In terms of that um, whole customer intelligence report, um, we provide that annually, as you are aware. Um, we have done a lot of work in terms of educating people around the difference between a complaint and a service request, um, although, you know, to some extent there has been an escalation in, in terms of people making those complaints. So from that point of view, I think it's... You know, that's just a reflection of where we are in terms of that, in, in terms of how that's sort of uh, treated. In terms of the second point around why the number of complaints is upheld, that's just a matter of fact, really, and that's following that investigation through the Council's TELUS process and, and through the discussions that we have with the complainants. You know, if there is a legitimate reason, you know, why that complaint should be upheld and there's any organisational learning, uh, then again that's a matter of fact really and I think elsewhere in the report it describes where those complaints are isolated to um, and we're high because obviously the what we've said in the past is dealing with the complaint is clearly important and we respond in the in the council's corporate timescales to that but equally important is the learning from it so the you said we did sort of reflection back is critical so where we have upheld complaints then we've done a analysis of that and as you can see there's a breakdown in the report of some of that in terms of the repairs because what you'll see is um, this report because it's you know a year behind if you like was at the time when um, the repairs contractors with with weights at the time were going we were re-procuring it so it was a predictable consequence of probably that changeover to be fair um, 
but certainly I mean we can provide more information offline for you but that's our initial observation is that you know we are treating complaints in line with the Ombudsman's new code of gu guidance which probably has uh, shifted the emphasis in terms of service requests and the ones upheld we continue to learn from. Chair, if that's okay. No, thank, thank you very much. That sounds that's fair enough. Uh, and I, I think it d details on that same page. You know, 79 out of, uh, with, with a, a number of households being 4,322, it, it, is, it is a small figure. But yeah, if, the, if there's any learning in that, then, then we do need to pick it up. Uh, Councillor Farrell. It, just to add to what you said there, Chair, um, I've just done some quick maths and that's 5% complaints. So actually, on the whole scheme of things, that's not too bad. And I think that it's uh, definitely worth looking into what those complaints are. And as Tina Mustafa said, the learning's into it, but I think we can safely say we'd, we're doing a good job. Okay, thank you very much. Any further questions or comments from Cabinet members? Okay, Councillor Farrell, have you moved? Yep, I'll move set. those uh, recommendations on block. So all six of those moved. Do we have a seconder? Uh, it was either Councillor Dorr or Pritchard, whichever was first. Um, all those in favour? Okay, that is carried. Thank you very much. And that brings us on to agenda item eight, which is uh, South Staff's legal service, and this is the report of the portfolio holder for finance and customer services. Councillor Bailey. Thank you, Chair. This report seeks approval for the increased resource to fund changes to the staffing within the shared service legal service. As members are aware, a shared legal service was approved by Cabinet and established in December 2019 between Litchfield District Council, South Staff District Council and Tamworth Borough Council. The service is hosted by South Staff's District Council. Like a number of other professional services, this service has encountered a significant staffing turnover and the market for solicitors is currently extremely buoyant and competitive. The turnover has impacted on the service and as such the original structure is now not fit for purpose. The new staffing proposal will result in an increase in costs to all three authorities within the shared service. South staffs have actually already approved this request and Litchfield will be considering this request in November. The proposed structure is detailed within the report and does add in much needed resource in terms of additional management support and a further solicitor to help service the three planning committees across each local authority. In addition, I can now update that whilst the report refers to the appointment of a legal apprentice, unfortunately, the recruitment process didn't yield, yield sorry, a suitable candidate, but South staffs have instead supported it there, uh, partly their own from, from their own sorry, uh, paralegal trainee, which is appointed and working well within their team. Whilst there have been some service issues, feedback from all three authorities is generally, generally positive. I know that actually a number of us have already had to use this service and sometimes that has been at weekends or late evenings. The additional cost of the proposed new structure is approximately 92,000 per annum. The shared service is based on an equal cost share across all three authorities. Each authority would therefore be asked to increase their contribution from the current 112,300 per annum to 145,300, plus any in inflation increases as per the agreement. Members are reminded that the increase still represents a significant saving when we compare legal spend prior to the establishment of the shared legal service. If the request is not approved, the partnership would need to review this review at the shared service, which would result in considerable officer time being spent on dissolving the partnership. Further additional funding would also be required to reinstate Tamworth Borough Council's own legal team in order to secure an alternative provider. Finally, I am able to report that further discussions with another local authority to join the partnership are currently underway, but no financial details are yet available. Clearly, any further changes to the port partnership would be presented to Cabinet for their consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Bailey. Uh, questions or comments, Councillor Cook indicated. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, just to qu just quantify, has Councillor Bailey moved a recommendation because I wanted to amend it slightly? It's just come to me during Councillor Bailey's speech. It will make sense. So I guarantee Did you move it? it I'll, I'll, it's I'll, not been moved as yet. I'll, all I was going to recommend, um, slight change to the recommendation is that, you know, exactly as it is, but peg on to the end, pending Litchfield agreeing. Because if Litchfield don't agree in November, this is null and void, isn't it? 
So it, I just think, just for the sake of our governance, for Litchfield, pending Lichfield's agreement. And, uh, and, and I did have a point to make, Mr Chairman, but I'm happy to come back in when you're ready for me. Uh, that's, uh, are, are you happy with the, that recommendation, Councillor Bailey? Okay. So, so when it comes to moving the recommendation, you'll move the one with the additional words rather than amend and... Yeah. Okay, no problem. Uh, Councillor Cook, do you want to come back? Yeah, I was just going to support Councillor Bailey's absolutely correct point. Before 2019, legal services were costing us a fortune. Entering this partnership, even if it is going to cost us a little bit more at this occasion, is still a significant saving compared to the money we were spending you know, five, ten years ago. I, th I think what a lot of people have got to realise is you can say you employ a solicitor, but every solicitor has a specialty. So if you employ somebody who's good with land charges and planning, it doesn't mean they understand litigation and you have to go out and get that advice. And while West Midlands, West Midlands employers, which we're a member of, historically been a good asset, we still had to go seek outside legal cover. Going into this partnership means more expertise is available to this council, making it a hell of a lot cheaper than continuously going out to the private sector to seek that advice. So I wholeheartedly support this report, Mr Chairman. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Cook. Any further questions or comments from members? Okay, so Councillor Bailey, do you want to move that recommendation? Yeah, move the recommendation, including the wording for Litchfield County Council. And Councillor Cook has seconded. All those in favour? Okay, that is carried. Uh, and if memory serves me correctly, that brings us to the end of the agenda this evening. So thank you for your involvement and participation, and uh, I'll close the meeting now and wish you a safe journey home. Thank you.